There he is, folks. Oh, this is not a bad fish at all. Matter of fact, this is a big crappie. Look here. Look at here. Look at here. Look at here. Let's go ahead and add him right there. My goodness. There he is, folks. That's a big crappie right there. Look how gutted, girthy. These fish are heavy this time of the year. First fish of the evening. And let's let him go real quick and we'll talk about it. Yes, let him, let him go. Whoa, he's ready to go, wasn't he, folks? Now, <clears throat> I've got about an hour to fish. And that was a black crappie one of about 12 inches long 11 and a half 12 inches long and i caught him on a hand tied jig that's golden sharp truce that's my favorite one thirty second ounce with a size six sickle hook tied with a loop knot six pound test floor carbon down to eight pound test braid on my spinning reel 2000 size johnny mars spinning reel it's a Daiwa reel with a six and a half foot ducket crappie slayer light action rod and my connection is like always a double uni knot and I have about a four foot leader now that fish was around 12 feet deep what I'm going to do is see if I can vertical jig another one up by repeating that We'll get back up under here. I want to show y'all some shad. If they're still there, I'm pretty sure they are. They're thick. They're very, very, very thick. And uh, that makes it a little bit tough. But being it's late in the evening, it, it'll help me out as far as catching a few crappie this evening. When shad are this thick, all they have to do, meaning the crappie, is reach up there and grab one. That's what makes it tough. So let's get it back up under here and I'll show you how thick these shad are. Then we'll get back to fishing. But remember that fish was uh, around 12 feet deep. So I'm just gonna try to repeat that. Okay, let's look at that. Y'all see that? Look what a bunch of shad. They start around 10 feet or nine feet and go all the way to the bottom. Now, let me catch this. This could be a mixture. I mean, look at that. Y'all see that? How thick they are. A mixture of thread fin shad and gizzard shad, both. So the reason why I'm fishing 12 feet deep and caught that fish is because crappie feed up. I'm fishing slightly above the shad. And that worked. Let's see if it'll work again. And I wasn't moving it very aggressive. It didn't take long to get that bite, folks. So maybe we can catch four or five before dark. I don't have long, but you never know. Might catch a trophy crappie. Now, the reason why I selected Golden Sharp Truce is because the water is a little bit cloudy. I can't have all this rainfall we've had. So that's the reason. And plus, it's late in the evening. But the main thing, of course, like I said, is to find the right depth and keep that jig at that depth. And in this case, well, it's around 12 feet deep. And I'm not working it very aggressive. I'm just sort of holding it there, picking it up, letting it fall, maybe hitting the jig a couple times like that. This braid is very, very sensitive. Very sensitive. Plus, it's a high-vis braid, and I can see that light line jump and feel it remarkably well. Crappie normally are soft biters, but vertical jigging, folks, 
is very effective. Here's another fish. Golly. And it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a blessing for me to be out here fishing this evening. <laughs> it is. Nothing short of a blessing. It's a big crappie. Okay. Come on up here, boy. My goodness. That's a good one. Is it not? That's a slab fish. I'm going to show y'all this one because it's a big one. Another, yet, another big crappie. My, 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 my. Here we go. Another big black crappie. Keeping that jig at the right depth is very, very important. Especially when you have this many shad for them to, to select from. But evidently, I have the right color because they're hitting it. They're eating it up. Let's let him go. That's a nice fish. It's been a while since I've been vertical jigging, and I love it, folks. I love it. Woo! Doggone woo! Okay. I want you to look how, how that jig looks in the water. Look at that. See what that loop knot's doing for it? It's keeping that jig horizontal. Is that not realistic looking? Just barely, barely moving it. Y'all watch my rod tip. Let me show you. Now I have a loop knot tied into that jig, so that jig is in the position of a minner. He's level. He's parallel with the water, he's level. He's horizontal, whatever way you want to say it. Now that marabou and that tinsel, all I have to do is just barely, barely, barely twitch it. And that jig is just sitting there doing that. And then when I drag that rod tip a little bit and do that, that makes it double whammy dangerous. Very little action, it don't take much. Whether you're fishing in hot water or cold water, right now the water temperature's around 49 degrees on top. 48, excuse me. 48, that's cold. So we're trying to show these crappie a target, a manner that they can catch easy. That's what we're doing. We're trying to appeal to their metabolism right now because the water's so cold. There he is. Y'all probably seen that lion jump. I'm pretty sure he hit it and come up. Come up with it. Okay, this is a nice crappie right here. Let's see if we can flip him in. He's the smallest one <laughs> I've caught and he's probably uh, 10 inches long. But he's fat. The re all three of them, if y'all have noticed, has been extremely fat. Their stomach is full. Let's get him right here. See, see this right in here? His stomach, just like the other two, are full of shad. Absolutely full of shad. Okay. Let's let him go. Go on back. Look here. Let me show y'all again one more time. See the shad? <laughs> That's why I'm fishing extra slow. That's another reason I'm fishing extra slow. Hold, just holding that jig right in front of their face. That's what I'm doing. Real slow. There's so much bait there. I've got to make that jig look a lot different. Now, the shad that these fish are picking off that they're eating are definitely the smaller shad, okay? And they could be a bunch of gizzard shad, which are big ones in here too, but they'll mix in the winter time. But the point I'm trying to get at, the, the ones that these crappie are targeting are the weaker shad. Not the healthy ones, but the weaker ones. 
so I'm making this jig look weak okay y'all get the drift now get it get the drift <laughs> oh well let's catch another one. there he is there's another one oh my goodness what do we got right here well this ain't a crappie nope that's a yellow bass he thumped it just like a crappie it's hard to distinguish the difference to be honest with you especially when you're vertical jigging they feel basically the same it's just a hard a hard quick thump like snapping your fingers that's how it feels he was suspended up there looking for a shad he come up grab that jig he was in amongst those shad just like these crappie are they're in them but they're coming up seeing my jig flashing <laughs> there he is now that's a crappie no doubt no doubt I've been catching quite a few of them uh, yellow bass folks but I can tell a crappie when I set the hook <laughs> This is what I do right here if I don't have no fish formula with me. Okay. That's an old, old trick. If you don't like to buy fish formula, do that right there. That right there will mask any odors that you put on that bait. And it works well. Skippity do dar, skippity a, my oh my, what a wonderful day, plenty of sunshine heading my way, zippity do dar, zippity a. Well, folks, that's gonna be the end of it. Uh, honestly, I had about forty-five minutes to fish, and that was it. And I still caught quite a few crappie by vertical jigging. But, you know, it's not only a fun technique, it's a very productive technique. Anytime you can hold a bait of your choice in front of a crappie long enough, a period of a time, he's going to eat it, okay? But I get a lot of questions, and this question has been popping up a whole lot. And it has to do with braid fluorocarbon line and also mono y'all excuse the traffic there's a lot of traffic on this road and um what as far as vertical jigging is concerned do you like braid you know i get that question a lot i do as long as i have a soft soft rod like this one real limber but i've been driving nails for a long time matter of fact when i started we didn't even have a nail gun okay most of the nails i mean we just drive them with a hammer and my hook set i'm not kidding not, that's why i'm telling y'all this is too hard i have to really watch what i'm doing and think when it comes to braid and vertical jigging well i have to really pay attention folks all you need because braid doesn't have virtually no stretch at all even though i have a fluorocarbon leader right here connected to it, it fluorocarbon don't have much stretch at all but the combination of those two together makes a super sensitive situation so what you do is just snap your wrist just snap your wrist when you're using braid even with a limber rod now mono is probably the way to go because you're going to lose far fewer fish with mono because of the stretch quality that's just my opinion but if you'll watch it and and set that hook lightly just by snapping your wrist you'll, you can be okay with braid okay but really i prefer mono when I'm vertical jigging. 
I just, I don't hardly lose any fish. Too hard of a hook set with braid, you're going to rip his mouth. It's just that simple. That's a fact. The crappie has a, a very soft mouth. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel. Hey. Woo. Hey, remember, go fishing when you can. Because it's good for you.